Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we are going to be looking at the most mysterious song on the internet and attempting to restore it. There was a video posted yesterday by Wang, and it's a video about a song that has yet to be identified. It's very mysterious. Basically, the backstory is, is the this radio station in Germany, uh, somewhere between 1982 to 84, uh, would play local band kind of music, and this was recorded onto cassette. And then years later, it was recorded into from cassette to iTunes, and then encoded with a very abysmal uh, bitrate MP3. So the audio is pretty rough. Um, just because of, you know, all the generations that it uh, had to suffer through. So it's like, yeah, like, you know, radio, whether it's AM or FM, probably AM, because it's mono, uh, then to uh, cassette, which degrades over time, and then, you know, MP3, and all these stages kind of affected it. And this is the song here, and I'm, I'm, I really am obsessed with this song. It's really good. It's really cool. This is the uh, video referenced the, yeah, this is the the audio referenced in the video. This is actually can be found on YouTube, the most mysterious song on the internet. I recommend that you check it out. It's a minute and fourteen something, and uh, yeah, it starts off like this. Right, and I was listening to it, and you know, it looks stereo, but I'm like, this is actually mono, and I was like, okay, so. The original is somewhere, so I went and I found the original recording posted on a, uh, a website for identifying songs, and I got the original uh, file here. And the the uh, yeah the I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check out it in Explorer, and I'll open up the properties, and we can see it here. So the details. Um, Title is called Check It In, Check It Out. The year 1984, uh, 1 minute 14 seconds. The bit rate is 48 kilobits per second. So it's 48K, but it's mono. So it's equivalent to 92, which is still not, not that transparent. If you want, like, you know, something that passes as transparent, you want, like, 192. But better yet, you know, 320 would be best, or better yet, wave. Um... Um, we're, we're trying to find and get the original full recording of the cassette. Or, you know, I have, you know, professional cassette players behind me. You know, I could even archive the thing, depending on what uh, kind of, you know, metal the, the tape is made out of. But yeah, anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a little bit under the weather, which might affect this. But yeah, so this is the uh, the original here. And... You know, the thing that you notice right away is there's a dip in the beginning here uh, in volume. It goes up, right? Right, so the, the dip is uh, down there. So that's the first thing that I did. Uh, this uh, audio right here is kind of my edit how I edited it all to uh, the, pieced it all together. I'll explain what I did and then we'll continue on. I didn't want to do this all on uh, on this video because it would be kind of long. Um, you'll notice that some of the snare hits also, right? I'll just rename this or recolor it. Some of these snare hits are, uh, there's something that happens with MP3 encoders, especially the early ones that are pretty not that great. You get this, uh, it's called pre-echo, and it kind of cancels itself out. Um, if you listen to the some audio material will essentially confuse mp3 encoders and i remember you know uh, a young lad i would listen to george carlin and the 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 the, the bit rates on those um mp3s allegedly that i used to allegedly download um would be very low and 
MP3 encoder kind of breaks apart with very chaotic material like uh, white noise or crowd applause. And I was like, why does the crowd sound so weird? Um, that is caused uh, by the encoder. And the encoder does some weird stuff at lower bit rates, which is the, uh, the snare issue that we're about to hear. Uh, if I just find one. Right, you get this weird thing going on. And there's a bit of a tape flutter as well. Um, and this is compounded by the recording and the playback. So some to look into. Uh, there are ways to fix that, but that would take a little while. Um, repairing that is pretty tricky, but you can do it. But anyway, so I, I took this and I created a new channel with uh, the original here. And I'll just get rid of that so you don't get confused. This purple friend here is the track in question. And what I did is I just, I move stuff around um, because some parts were a little bit more gnarly than others. And uh, it's quite seamless. And for some of the, the snares that wouldn't kind of, would have that awful pre-echo, I would move ones from other places and move them in. And, you know, eventually you got, you know, consistent volume at the beginning here. Oh, I might want to solo that. Right, a little bit of work needed. Um, but this is just uh, just working through it. This is more for fun, more for an exercise. I'm not an expert in this kind of restoration, but yeah, let's move on. Um, also what I did is I dropped it in um, uh, Isotope RX and I just extracted uh, the vocal. Um, the source material is not that great. So, you know, when, when, you don't, when you don't have great source material, you know, things don't work the way you expect, but I essentially got the vocals extracted. And uh, I edited and uh, kind of shaved out the uh, the garb that's in there that would uh, kind of interfere here. Right, the, the guitar kind of bleeds through. But uh, yeah, this is going to be very useful for something we're going to do afterwards. Right? Right. And that's going to be super useful. And then, just for fun, I dropped in the instrumental. Right. So, what am I going to do with these two things? Well, I'm going to use these as ways to widen the track and kind of introduce back in these uh, kind of send effects that they would do, uh, that they would use back in the day. And it's, a, and it's a good way to add width that sounds natural. You can't just, you know, add in a, make it stereo and, you know, it, it won't work, right? You want separate kind of elements to be in their own space. And that's why this is like this. I'm going to do uh, some center frequency stripping a little bit later. But anyway, let me get quick little notes open. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, first I'm going to look at the frequency spectrum in the main mix here. So the main is um, the vocal, like everything together, but edited. And we're going to take a look at it. Right, and we see um, with MP3 encoders, um, they'll just shave off the higher frequencies. Those frequencies don't necessarily like they're they're there, but for a compromise to make um, more clarity in the area that we hear, that we're more sensitive to, uh, it will shave off those frequencies. And, you know, it's done with, like, really clever filters and psychoacoustic stuff. Right, so, you know, it's being shaved off there, uh, roll off at uh, 10k around there. And it's very abrupt. Okay, that's pretty cool. And you'll notice that the low end um, is rolled off too, and that's inherent to radio and tape. So a bunch of these things are compounded.
right? Right, a little bit in there. Right. So let's uh, let's kind of look at and surgically do some things to this. First, we're going to remove the noise. So noise and hiss and, you know, all these things. We can easily remove. I'm going to be using X noise in the mono version because we're working with a mono track for now. Um, I'm going to be working with this and it's just going to be for just simple kind of just for fun. Um, and what this will do is this will kind of just tame out the noisiness. It does some things to sibilance as well. So you got to be uh, kind of careful with it. It can also you can also remove the 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 that high end sizzle of the cymbals and a bit of the snare as well. So be careful. What I like to do with this kind of plugin, X noise is pretty good. Z noise is more intensive. This is more um, you know low latency. Um, we don't have a whole lot of noise uh, because you know for some reason you know either it gets uh, filtered out. But uh, it's good to kind of do that. So we're going to go difference, which will let us hear the noise. And we can see the adjustments that are happening here. So let's give it a listen. Right. So, you know, we, we, we bring the threshold up here. Starting to hear that noise. And we can see and hear reduction as we uh, increase the reduction. So it's kind of like reverse. Right. So I don't know if you can hear that. You can hear just a little bit of artifacts going on. Right. And that, that, that contributes. So it's going to be tiny little adjustments along the way that are going to I don't know, hopefully make this sound cool. Um, and again, this is an exercise. Uh, I'm not an expert, but we're gonna we're gonna see what's going on here. So I'm gonna go back to audio. Maybe I'm taking a little bit too much off of there. Right, so you got all that sibilance there. Yeah. And yeah, all this contributes. Right, I don't want to get that snare. I don't want to, I don't want to touch the snares because the snare sounds so dope. But yeah, it's just a little thing you can do. Um, there, when you are recording cassette for audio, uh, preservation and you want to remove the noise afterwards give it a long lead in because I, I could not capture the noise profile um, when you when you capture the noise profile it'll actually like you know capture it and you can capture the hum as well and uh, if the hum was there I would have be able to I, I would have been able to confirm that it was um, recorded in Germany at some point because you can actually see the electrical hum as a as a frequency in there can't see it because it's a little bit too short and then the mp3 artifacts completely cancel it out but anyway let's continue on first thing i'm going to do <clears throat> excuse me is i'm going to shave off that top end right just because there might be little things in there and it's such a steep filter with that MP3 encoder that you don't want it to kind of just like get cut off <laughs> like right away. Now that doesn't sound too bad, but you'll notice that there's just some stuff down there. And mind you, it's below the noise floor, kind of. But uh, yeah, we can just gently roll that off. Yeah, so it got all that stuff out of there. And let's take a look at the 
the low end here because there might be some stuff down there. And yeah, yeah, that, there is. Okay, so that's very useful. So, right, so this is just a basic high pass. It's like we don't want to be accentuating all that stuff um, later on down the road. So one of the things I want to do first, besides fix all the, the snares that I did, is I want to add in a bit more bass. I'm going to insert a new audio track. And I'm going to get the main, and I'm going to send the main to that. And I'm going to go pre-effects, right? Because we don't need to necessarily worry, uh, because we're just going to be affecting the low end here. So let's go uh, air. Yeah, so we'll go low air mono. We'll just drop low air mono in there. And this is going to be the bass track, right? So what low air does is it takes the you know the upper harmonics of a of a bass and then adds the harmonics below it so it's like it's like the opposite of max bass which you know takes a and then adds harmonics you get like the illusion of like a hefty bass without you know adding more bass um but uh yeah let's take a listen to that right i'm putting it in a separate channel so we can have some control over it Right, so I'll just turn down the direct. Right, and I'll bring the range up. So the range in this. Right, so yeah, that that low end, that low end stuff down there. So yes, yeah, below like a hundred. Let's just say that. So the range will be you know a hundred. So it'll operate between you know sub to hundred here. And the low air and the low will, you know, adjust the low endness that's going on. Right. So that's like low air there, and then this is low. Right. So we're getting some stuff there. Right, so I should kind of explain. So let's let's actually look at it. Got a cough, sorry. <coughs> I should cover my mouth, but no, that's fine. I just I coughed on an infant. That's okay. All right. So the low, I assume, um, accentuates the harmonics above the range, and then the low accentuates the har harmonics below. Right, so this is this is dangerous. This will just give you some rumbliness, which works for uh, EDM, but this is not EDM. Right, so we gotta kind of play around with this. All right, so we we have that there. Let's give it a listen with the original and uh, the the bass going on here. Right, and if we're, we're getting a little bit nervous here, we can just multi-band it and just listen to that one band, right? And yeah, actually, stop it and solo that. A bit more of a steeper roll off there. All right, and we can dial in the bass that we would like. All right, pretty rumbly. Right, maybe I can move that down. Right, and I'll turn it on and off. And we can really have a listen to what it's doing. All right, so we're effectively adding things that aren't necessarily there. And you can't really do this with an EQ. But anyway, let's group these together.
All right. And uh, I'll just call this, yeah. I'll call this uh, main and base. All right. From here, uh, I want to kind of try something. I'll try base rider. Not live. Base rider mono. And this is this is inherent to certain material where uh, as the the bass note goes up and down in pitch, it, it perceivably gets louder. And you can get something called one note bass using this. Um, and it's not quite as uniform. So this is a good way to kind of, you know, ride the bass. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a compressor, but it mimics the behavior of back in the day on the actual mixing console, they would move the bass kind of, you know, the, the, the actual fader up and down, like human automation, and you, you know, you'd ride the fader. And yeah, this bass rider. There's also, you'd ride the, the, the fader for vocals. And you do things that compressors couldn't really do, but uh, yeah, it's kind of mimicked in here. So let's give this a listen. Yeah. All right, so we got we got that, but the bass is uh getting a little bit gnarly there. So I I, I uh, bust these two together and first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna drop an EQ in there. All right, so we see like it's more of a fuller track with the low end and all that fun stuff. It could be a little dangerous. So I'm gonna kind of, uh, I don't have to do this. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I can do this afterward. No, I don't actually need to do this afterwards. Let's just leave that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna you know roll off that low end. Right? We can't actually hear that. And I'll just type in the actual value, which is you know, 30 hertz, general uh, agreement, um, you know, either 24 dB per octave or 48. So I'm just kind of searching around here, listening to what I'm doing. All right, so the that uh, that low end bass has a bit more kind of definition, maybe a little bit too much, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna fix that in a momento. Right, we can uh, take a look at this very gentle filter. I love this filter. Right. I'm just listening to what I got here. It's it's this is pretty difficult for me, um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best here. I'm gonna get uh, Pro MB in here, which is a multi-band compressor, just just because I want to have a bit more control over the separate sections. I'm first gonna start with that bass. Right, so I'm I'm splitting it up. I'm going to be splitting it up into its separate kind of frequency bands here. All 
right? And you want you want a uh, slower attack and slower release on the low end, just because the frequencies are very wide, or like the the duty cycle of the actual frequencies are you know longer. So you know the the general rule is as far as I know, is on the lower end in terms of multiband compression. You want the the attack and release to be very slow. You want it to kind of ride the audio. And on the higher end of the frequency spectrum, you know, you can get away with having a faster attack. Uh, that's a general rule. Also, you know, you don't even have to use multiband compression. Um, some people don't think that it's useful at all. Uh, you know, it's kind of controversial. Well, not really. It's just, you know, different different schools of thought, like Dave Pensato doesn't find multiband compressors to be musical at all, and he doesn't use them. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I find them to be useful because you can kind of control things. Um, you know, a famous... Something that's kind of a, a multiband compressor is a de That's basically it. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Right, so that, that snare. snare is okay let's just see what we got on the top end here right we can get like a faster attack here get that uh maybe a faster release to get the range down you can split that up It's really going to be telling is when we come over here, the vocal. Giving that more of a, a more of a kind of a uh, more of a reduction on that sub. I really love those drums. Right. And the next kind of multiband compressor, I'm going to try to take those drums and accentuate them. All right, let's give it a free band here and we'll audition it. So I want that to kind of trigger whenever the snare hits, because I really love that snare. I want that to just pop right through. All right, so let's turn off Audition, and we'll do Expand, because we're expanding. All right, I don't want to lose that. Very important. as well. Right, 
so I adjusted the uh, slope on the upper frequency here, so it's more of a doesn't necessarily touch that low end too much. Right, so we're getting that's just what I like to do, and for the last little while we've been working um, with some mono stuff. Let's do some. Let's make this uh, stereo. Uh, it's not just throwing a make it stereo VST on there. You actually, it's best to do some stuff to it. So the uh, the vocals here are very useful because we can do a thing that's actually in the track and add some reverb to them. Reverb will make things stereo and give it space and depth. So I'm going to try to match that best that I can. A little bit of a delay in there too, but we'll do that a tiny bit later. Pro R. So we'll do a uh, spacious and a bit of chorus. No, maybe not. Maybe just like a hundred percent there. All right, and this this adjusts the uh, the curve of the uh, the uh, frequencies going in. You make it dark or bright. It's just kind of tilting the EQ. So we'll kind of mix that in. Right, so with that on, we have the 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 mix all the way up there. It it actually you know gets the track going in a in a good way. And I'll actually show you right. We have insight here. So uh, the stereo field. Okay. So you know. Right now it's mono. Right. Right, we have got correlation plus one. Everything is just mushed together to mono. When we add this, we get some we get some depth. Just when the vocals hit though. There's also a little bit of a delay on there, but we'll get into that in a bit. And um, yeah, uh, you know, that's basically we're we're faking having an audio track and then sending that audio track to a you know a reverb unit uh, because I extracted that earlier. We're going to be doing something else to this right here, which is the instrumental. Right, and I'm gonna be doing a similar thing to this. I'm actually going to copy that reverb. Right, and what I need to do is, I'm gonna keep that because it sounds like well, kind of a bit there. I want to take out that low end. All right, let's see what that sounds like. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna maybe, uh, I'm gonna give this a try. I'm going to actually strip out the mids and just leave the sides, right? And this is gonna sound a little bit weird for those that have never heard this. Right, so this is just the stereo material, which is the separate material. And I'm gonna mix that into, you know, what we have going on here.
right? And I can do a bunch of things with this. So say there's this uh, guitar fill here. I can actually like boost that frequency. Like boost it right there, and that's like kind of like throwing. Or I can just automate the volume. Right, so we're hearing some uh, some lovely stereo stuff. Uh, I'm actually just gonna leave this because this this is, this EQ's job is to just essentially strip out the mids. Okay, um, let's continue. Uh, but first, let's look at our uh, correlation. I could probably get away with a bit more stereo stuff, but the era didn't have extreme kind of extreme stereo width. Right, so we're still good. Right, so let's let's mix this all together. Right? So right about now, I think, you know, it's okay, given the, the, the material, I guess. I don't know. Um, what else can we do? Well, we can further refine with a bit of uh, EQ, obviously. And just kind of uh, accentuate uh, what's there. And, oh, wait, no. Why'd I, why'd I do that? Let's take that out and go back to main mix, double click there. Okay. Right. So if I wanted to kind of boost the uh, the vocals in a way, I can actually just boost the you know the 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 the, the stereo vocals down here, and that will in turn you know make the vocals a bit louder in a way. Um, because when you push things out to stereo, everything kind of sounds uh, bigger. And I'm gonna attempt that. Right, and I can even just strip out the sides in some parts. Right, but when really cool things happen, really cool things happen when you boost the sides in the upper frequencies. Yeah, I like I like those those synths and I like that they're loud. All right, so I just played the original here. And then there's the quote unquote restore. It's not up to me to decide whether or not it's restored or not. mids out here. And 
and yeah, just for just for fun and you know just to use a compressor, uh, we will you know bus compress this just slightly. And what this will do is this will add in a bit of dynamic back into it uh, because MP3 compression is you know it it actually compresses in terms of you know audio or like dynamic range compression. Right, just a little bit. Right, so what I'm doing is I'm just, I just want to just to gently ride the audio. Right, and as it sounds like that because the knee is engaged. It's not an accurate kind of representation of what's going on. Right. And if I wanted to kind of continue, what I really love, yeah, having access to a, well, one, like the multi tracks, that'd be ideal, uh, or like a higher quality um, recording of that cassette would be uh, pretty good because you can't necessarily remove these artifacts. It's really challenging. Uh, the only thing you can do really is move things around. But, you know, with this high frequency content around here, and that might even be a little bit too reverby, but it uh, it it's just for the sake of example. in there. Or maybe a bill. Anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It's a fun little exercise. Um, this is nowhere near perfect. Uh, there are people out there that are way more competent than me. But uh, yeah, it's just a kind of quick way to uh, go about kind of, you know, the worst case scenario of uh, a restoration of, you know, this kind of music. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned stuff. Take care and have a good one.